So you've got a character who's just, well, unlikable. For whatever reason, readers just aren't getting behind them. They're turning people away from your story. That's a problem. Fortunately, I've got not one, but three solutions for you coming up. Hi, I'm Jessica Brody, author of Save the Cat Writes Novel and the founder of Writing Mastery Academy. These Writing Mastery videos feature tips, tools, and techniques to take your writing and your writing career to the next level. In this video, I share with you my top three tips for solving the very common problem of character likability. Here's a question I get a lot. What do I do if my character is unlikable? at least at the beginning of the story. Now, there's a lot of debate going on out there about whether or not main characters have to be likable. Let's put that debate aside for a moment because I think we can all agree that readers at least have to be invested in your main character or interested in your main character, otherwise they stop reading. So regardless of whether your reader likes the main character, they at least have to like the experience of reading about them. And that can be hard when you have a character who is inherently unlikable at the start. In fact, this was one of my biggest challenges when I wrote my young adult novel, 52 Reasons to Hate My Father, about a spoiled teen heiress who has to take on 52 low-wage jobs in order to earn her trust fund. At the start of the story, my main character, Lexington Larrabee, is a total spoiled brat who has no concept of reality, consequences, or how regular people live. That, of course, is the whole point of the book. I wanted to tell a story in which a hero has a drastic character arc, and the way to do that most effectively was to bring her as far back as I could, make her really bratty, really spoiled, really clueless, so that she could change, grow, and improve herself. But that of course led me to the problem of her being unlikable. How do you like someone who's so out of touch, who's such a brat, who's so overindulged, and more important, how do you get a reader to root for her? Here are my three tips that helped me with my main character, and I hope they'll help with yours too. Tip number one, give your hero one redeeming quality or action, even if it's small, at the beginning of the story. If you're familiar with my plotting guide, Save the Cat Writes a Novel, you know that this tip is actually what gave the book its title. When you have a highly unlikable hero, you have to devise a way for them to do something redeemable preferably toward the beginning of the story. Your hero has to save a cat. Yes, like from a burning building or a tree or a shelter, or do something equally redeeming. Putting in these little moments of redemption warms your reader to the hero. The reader experiences this moment in the story and goes, oh, well, see, they're not all bad. In 52 Reasons to Hate My Father, I chose to make Lexington's dog her save the cat moment. She's very attached to this dog, and she considers the dog to be her one true friend. But instead of making the dog some designer little dog that Lexi carries around like an accessory, as is so popular with heiresses and celebrities, I chose to make the dog a rescue dog. Toward the beginning of the story, Lexi tells us about how she rescued Holly the Papillon from a busted evil puppy mill. I also play up the bond between her and the dog, and the fact that the dog really is Lexi's only ally, and her one true friend who totally understands her. This hopefully gives Lexi one glimmer of redemption, as she's lamenting about her $500,000 Mercedes that she just crashed into a convenience store on Sunset Boulevard. So I guess you could say, Lexi saved a dog? Tip number two, give your hero an enemy. A really evil one. One of the best ways to make a reader sympathize with an unlikable character is to have an even more unlikable character to compare them to. Enter the villain. But remember, villains don't always have to be evil monsters with capes. They can be regular people. But if it's someone who's immediately pitted against the protagonist from the beginning, and we, the readers, can see how awful this person is, it will instantly make your hero more relatable. Because don't we all have that special someone in our life who we just can't stand? who is just out to get us. So as soon as you introduce that person in your hero's life, your reader will have bonded with the hero, regardless of how likable or unlikable they are. In 52 Reasons to Hate My Father, the villain was always clear to me, even before I began writing. It's in the title. Lexi's nemesis is her father. When I started facing the likability challenges in writing this book, I knew I had to make the father even worse than I originally thought to really get the reader on Lexi's side. So I just made him downright awful. 
He's cold, insensitive, unloving, and has never been there for her her entire life. He's basically a stranger to her. And it seems as though every time he's in her life, it's just to scold her for being a screw-up. I made sure to introduce Richard Larrabee by page 19, and I also made sure that his first impression was a lasting one. I did this in an attempt to get the reader on Lexi's side right off the bat, because I knew that her personality wasn't exactly charming in the beginning, and I wanted to create a reason for the reader to sympathize with her and root for her throughout the story. Of course, in the end, Lexi and the reader start to understand why her father is the way he is, but in the beginning, at least, he was an excellent device for hopefully bringing the reader around to Lexi's side, despite her glaring personality shortcomings. And finally, tip number three, make us love to hate them. Aren't there certain characters who we just love to hate? But why do we love to hate them? That is the key to unlocking this last tip, which is definitely the trickiest of the three to implement. The trick is to find a unique flaw in your character that you can exploit and exaggerate. In 52 Reasons to Hate My Father, I attempted to exploit Lexi's spoiled heiressness as her unique flaw. She may have been bratty, but she was over-the-top bratty. She may have been clueless, but she was over-the-top clueless. And her remarks on things and reactions to situations are hopefully humorous enough that you enjoy reading them and want to see how she'll respond to the next thing that comes her way. For instance, when she first gets into Luke's car, a very respectable Honda Civic, she remarks on how much she hates the color of the inside and complains that it's making her car sick. Then, when Luke fires back a sarcastic, not all of us were lucky enough to receive a Lexus on our 16th birthdays, Lexi replies, ew, like I'd ever be caught dead in a Lexus. She's just so out of touch that it's comical, and I attempt to play this up as her unique flaw. The reader understands how naive she is, and hopefully they enjoy reading about her because of it. So there you have it, my three tips on making unlikable characters likable, or at least redeemable, and fun to read about. If you want more tips on writing memorable characters, be sure to check out my online on-demand writing course, Foundations of Fiction, available in the Writing Mastery Academy, my online writing school. I've put a link to that in the description below. And if you'd like to learn more about the Save the Cat plotting method I mentioned earlier, be sure to sign up for my free Save the Cat starter kit, also linked below, which includes an overview of the method I use to plot all of my novels, plus three full plot beat sheets of popular novels. Good luck with your own unlikable characters, and I'll see you next time. Until then, happy writing!